Y'all ready? We're going to do a little dance. Y'all ready? No, I'm just messing with you. Just messing with you. All right, guys, hey, we need to continue in prayer for, for Doug and Kay. Kay got an awesome report uh, yesterday. She didn't have to go back for six months. So y'all give God a hand on this. <laughs> Truly a miracle. We need to be praying for uh, Barbara Moore and her family. We need to be praying for the, the Cranford family during this time and also for, for Lisa Denton and her family. Also, as a reminder, uh, we have hand sanitizer stations uh, as you come in and out and then all throughout the church and places, feel free to use it. All right, put a little dermat on there. Spread that around. It's better than spreading germs. And uh, for for the next few weeks, we're going to have an offer plate. We'll have one here and by the back door, okay? Just so everyone feels safe for the time being. So if you need to give your tithe or offering, just do it as you come in and out. Thank you very much for that. And one other thing, I want to invite you guys if. If you haven't been coming to Sunday school, small groups, whatever you want to call it, 10 o'clock on Sundays, if you want to grow and uh, go further in your walk with the Lord, that's an awesome time to come and be a part of the fellowship together and as we grow together. So uh, the better connected that we can be here at this church, the more connected we'll be out in the community. Now we want to see people come to know, come to know Jesus. Is that not why we're here? Right? So uh, let's come and uh, sharpen each other that we can go out and take the gospel. Do we have any August birthdays or anniversaries? I know we have one birthday. All right.
scripture reading Psalm 101 through 5. Shout triumphant to the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, and knowledge that Yahweh is God, he made us and we are his. His people are sheep of his pasture, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For what Yahweh is good, and his love is eternal, his faithfulness endures throughout all generations.
people like this at, at most campuses in the, in the state, and they have a fantastic job to reach out and serve and meet the needs of the college students. And as we go in prayer, we need to remember them, and also we need to remember the uh, uh, foreign missionaries that they have scattered throughout the world. Lord, we do thank you for this day. We ask, Lord, that you be with her, Pauline, as she works with these college students, Lord, as she reaches out to them, stretching work throughout the campus, Lord, and the many others that are doing the same thing in other campuses, Lord. It's a, it's a prime time, Lord, just to give them courage and confidence and, and assurance, Lord, as they go and do their job, Lord. We ask, Lord, to be with the missionaries that are also throughout this world, Lord, that are serving you. We have a new song today for most of you. I know the kids know it, uh, that went to Falls Creek. So I want you guys to sing it out and teach everybody else. Right? <laughs> Thank you. 
kind of get the full picture. These next few weeks, we're going to continue to break it down as we go through. But go back and read and get the full picture. As we shared last week, the Pharisees were more concerned about the outward things. We live in a world that's more concerned about the outward things, don't we? About what you have, what you own, where you live, how big your house is, how fancy, what vehicles you drive, how much money you have, how much land you have. We live in a world that all these things are top priority. But at the end of the day, church, they, none of it really matters. What you do with Jesus is what's going to stand the test of time. That's what lasts in eternity. The decision you make about Jesus. So they were more concerned with the outward things than they were with the inward. Mainly the heart. Jesus looks at the heart. And that's what we need to understand today. That Jesus looks at your heart. Not what you own. Not how much money you have. That God knows your heart. This very second. He knows what you struggle with. Think about it. Your deepest, darkest secrets, God knows. All those skeletons in the closet, God knows. And we've all got a past, don't we? And it's hard to, to speak about sometimes. But we've all got a past. We all come from somewhere that uh, maybe wasn't clean or it's dirty. Uh, I was a bad alcoholic at one time before Jesus saved my life and changed me. There's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain that goes along with that. But we've all got a past. But the good thing is God knows our heart. He knows your struggles. He knows the things that discourage you on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything about you, God knows. And that's an awesome thing. Kind of a scary thing too, though, huh? But God knows everything about us, and it means that we don't have to hide from Him. Remember the story of Adam and Eve? Right, where they tried to hide from Him when they messed up? That's us, a lot of the time. We try to hide from God, but you cannot run or hide from God. There's no way. Even if you wanted to, there's no way around it. This is what I want us to really grasp today, church. Is that God knows my heart. And I want you to repeat that with me right now. Everybody ready? On three, I want us to all say, God knows my heart. On three. One, two, three. God, God knows my heart. Y'all are good. Sleep last night, huh? <laughs> but God knows our hearts, guys. There's no running, there's no hiding. Last week was hard, the message that we talked about, but this week is going to get a little bit harder. So just bear with me and know this everybody, pay close attention. I'm not here to judge anyone in this building, only God is our judge. Okay? You're not the judge of the person next to you. I'm not the, the judge of anyone in here. Only God is. I read the text as the text is laid out there, and it's not anything that I'm reading any more into or saying. So know that today that I'm not here to judge you. God knows your heart, and that's what matters, okay? So go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 27. Is everybody there? Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. If you're there, please stand with me. Chapter 5, verse 27 through 32 is where we'll be. Again, no one try to run out the back door, okay? 
Let's set through the whole message and let's see what God wants to show us today. Verse 27, it says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Or either way, a woman in the same way with men man. Verse 29, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Verse 31, furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, speak to us this morning. God, we know that, that you're here to love us. God, we know that all this points to you. God, we pray that you get all the glory today. God, help us to, to just realize what, what you want to teach us today, to apply it to our lives. May we all be here, Father, with a, a strong relationship with you and, and uh, that we might love others even more. Again, God, that you get all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Just by reading 27 through 33, you think, man, this guy's going to say something stupid, Robert. And you're probably right. I probably will say something stupid. But, but bear with me, okay? This message is hard. You know why? Because sin is hard. It's hard to swallow. It's hard to even think about. Wrap our minds around sometimes. But church, listen. Sin is sin. Do we understand that? It does not matter what we think. It does not matter how we try to package it or reshape it or bundle it up make it look all nice and pretty. Sin is sin in God's eyes. Do you understand that today? That God is holy. We've all sinned and tried to justify it. I can go on and on about stories in my life where, where I messed up and tried to justify it. I don't know about you, but that's what we do. We need to understand today, church, that God is holy. We need to understand that marriage is holy in the eyes of the Lord. <clears throat> if you would, travel back with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Everybody awake today? Yeah. Right, Genesis 2, verse 21. One flesh. 
What I want us to, to pay attention to here is in verse 24. They shall become one flesh. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now let's turn back to Matthew 19. I'm going to jump all over the place. Matthew chapter 19. Stay with me. I might get y'all here for lunch time. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. Who's there first?
Everybody there? Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. He says, You have heard it said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. Jesus is again quoting from Exodus 20, verse 14, in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, we know the law clearly prohibits adultery.
We're either all the way or we're none of the way. Sin must be dealt with drastically because it has deadly consequences. Lust can ruin your life. Where does Jesus say it starts? Preparing the heart. Right? You're the one that feeds it. You're the one that keeps doing things to, to keep feeding and feeding and feeding and then sooner or later it leads to action. skipping over this because it's hard. Adultery is hard. Broken marriages are hard. You know, I'm, I come from a broken home. Drugs and alcohol and, and uh, abuse and, and things of, of that nature. And, uh, my dad was married two children before he ever met my mom. They were divorced and, and he never married my mom. So uh, and they had three kids together. Then they split up once we started once I got into high school. But, but I come from a home that uh, that I guess you would call broken. So I know the effects. And I know the devastation that, that the enemy wants to bring into your life. Neither one of my parents were believers at that time. And it really matters, guys. One, they didn't know any better because they were lost. But if we know Jesus, we know. We know better. Listen. Marriage is sacred. And the enemy wants nothing more than to ruin you and your marriage. Which can ruin your life, your kids' lives. And the consequences can continue and be lifelong. God isn't trying to, to dis discourage us today with this message. We need to realize how holy of a God we serve. Church, listen. It's not here to beat us up because of our past mistakes, because of our sin. God's saying, you know what? You messed up. It's okay. I love you. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. I'll forgive you. We serve a holy and a righteous God. It all points to Jesus. You have to have Jesus, though. Listen. We all see it. We fall short of so many areas in our lives. God wanted the very best for each and every one of us from the beginning, but guess what? We messed up. Now our only hope is Jesus. For him to restore all things. I don't know what you've gone through in your life, but I know this. The past is in the past. There are some things, guys, that you cannot go back and change. But you know what you can do? You can move forward with God guiding you. There are many, many things I would go back and change, but there's nothing. I can't do it. There's no way to go back. Look at verse 31. Furthermore, it has been said that whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual morality causes her to commit adultery. Whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Now, just reading that right, you think, well, that's hard. That is hard. It is hard. 
But there's more to this story. There's more to what Jesus, who he's talking to. Okay? We try to take things out of context. But Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees who have taken pride maybe not being part of the divorce or the rabbis have taken the liberty to change what scripture really said and they had wrongly concluded that men could divorce their wives over anything that displeased them as long as they gave them a certificate of divorce. So at this time they were they could divorce their wives or pretty much about anything. Maybe she don't cook. Get out of here. <laughs> you don't do the laundry. Go. There's a certificate. You don't never know. <laughs> Moses had provided this process to protect the women who were divorced. Not to just justify or legalize divorce under all circumstances. Jesus is pointing out to these men that marriage is holy. And just because you want to throw it out because she isn't doing what she wants, that means it still is holy. We live in a lot different days, right, than these people did at this time. If you were caught in adultery, you were what? Stoned to death. <coughs> Y'all remember the story, though, when, when they catch the woman in the act? They bring her out before Jesus. What happens? Because whoever was out sin cast the, the first stone. Now, see, Jesus is trying to be this up. He's here. I tell you that, hey, you might have messed up, but I love you. Just like he told the lady that was caught in the act of adultery. Doesn't matter how, how much how much you messed up in life, you still love you. Doesn't matter if you come from a broken home or been in a, a divorce or a marriage that listen, God loves you. It does not matter. About your past as long as you trusted in Jesus. Church, I want to say this that I'm guilty. I am guilty of adultery because I've lusted in my heart many, many, many times. Like, oh my gosh, you're a preacher. I don't know if not one man that had dealt with it. Or even every woman at some point. Not one of us, right? We're all guilty on the church. It's a matter of the heart. It's not about what you've done on the outside. It's about what's going on in here. What's taking place in here today? Maybe you haven't cheated on your wife or your husband or whatever. But what's going on in here right now is what God is trying to reveal to us today. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe you are caught up in, in lustful desires for someone or whatever it might be. Maybe God is trying to get a hold of it right now before it turns in to something far greater. We're all guilty. That's the whole point. You can't live up to the law. You can't do everything right. No matter how hard you try, it all points to Jesus. You have to have Him, church. Let's look at some, some takeaways. I can get out here for lunch early today. I'm still in You might be to other churches down to the cell phone. 
you want to get there, I'll like to work. <laughs> <laughs> I better wake up. <laughs> Let's look at some takeaways, guys. Listen, there's so much more that we can get into. Listen, if you want to have a discussion with me about this, come, come sit down with me, okay? Because I believe in grace, and I believe in mercy, and I believe that God will extend it to anyone. But there will come a day that that won't, that won't happen. Jesus is coming back one day, church. And he's coming back as a righteous and holy judge. And, and you can't get away with it then. But maybe today Jesus said, hey, you need to wake up. I have mercy and forgiveness and grace for you. The first thing is adultery begins in the heart. We must guard ourselves and flee from the enemy. What we watch, what we listen to, and what we read, it all needs to bring glory to God. That might have tell you turning off the TV. I don't know. <coughs> so many things on there, right, that are evil, that are polluting our children's minds. I mean, just see if you open your eyes at the enemies of heart. God, the matter is what we look at, what we listen to, what we read. So pay close attention to it. Second thing is we must deal with our sin. And sometimes that means in drastic measures. We must flee from sin. And that's different for each one of us. Maybe it's who you hang out with. Again, what you watch on TV or, or whatever it might be, you know how to enjoy it. You must flee from sin. The last thing is God is holy and marriage is holy. In a biblical marriage between a husband and wife where they become one flesh, the Bible teaches, in your marriage know that you are in this together. allow God to steer you both because God is holy we need Jesus. You understand that church? That all this points to us, not, we're not ever going to measure up. You're not ever going to be holy enough. You're not ever going to do enough right things right in order to make it to heaven, in order to be forgiven. You need Jesus. Amen. He's the only way. That's why don't miss this and think, well, oh, that preacher, he's preached of adultery. He's preached on divorce and marriage and all this stuff. Listen, everyone here is messed up. And in God's eyes, sin is sin. It doesn't matter what we think. Or it doesn't matter how we try to justify our actions. It matters that you need to be forgiven, that you need Jesus. We can't change the past. But we can ask Jesus to forgive us and ask those to forgive us that we were wrong and move forward. <coughs> Truth, there's a lot of us in here that still hold on to a lot of things in the past. You have to let it go. Let God move in your life. They would be reminded today that, that it's not about the outside but the inside. It's about your heart. Is your heart pure today? First, the Bible teaches in the Beatitudes that we just strive to have a pure heart. Only Jesus can give us a pure heart. If you're struggling with, with lust, if you're struggling with, with any of these things that we talked about, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you. If your marriage is struggling, God, guess what? God still answers prayers. You need to start praying. I know this message is, is tough. It's hard. But we all know that, that life is hard, right? It's tough. But 
we need to understand this, that God loves us. He'll never forsake us. No matter how bad we mess up, He's not going to leave us. If I could have the music, musicians to come forward.
Church, everyone here is broken, and we need Jesus. So go and reach the community. My challenge to you is to bring one person next week. Let's see if you do it. One. Let's double the attendance, huh? You need to bring two. <laughs> Three, baby. All right, go. All right. Y'all bow with me. Let's pray. We'll close out. Heavenly Father, God, we pray that you get all the praise and glory. God, we know that life is hard. It's tough. And there's situations that break our hearts. And God, we know that only you can, can mend relationships and mend broken hearts. And uh, you're the only one that can give us peace and joy. God, we ask for that today. And just bless all those that are here. Father, those that don't know you, God, I pray that they'll come to know you. And just continue to solve their hearts. Again, Father, help us to be uh, about reaching the community of the gospel. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, name, amen. amen.